In this video, I want to talk about the Euler method for solving uh, second order ODEs. So this is just an extension of the first order method. So let's, um, in the notation I'm going to be using is uh, we're going to have x, which is going to be a function of time. So then I'll call the derivative dx dt I'll call that x dot using a physics notation and the second derivative of x with respect to time I'll call x double dot. Okay, so then the um, the second order differential equation uh, we can write as uh, x double dot isolating the second derivative term uh, is equal to some function of t, x, and x dot. Okay, so let me just leave it in a general form. So f is some any function of t, x, and x dot. So the equation do not the equation does not need to be a linear equation. It can be nonlinear. But we want to find a numerical method then that can determine x as a function of time. So we'll use the Euler method. Um, and uh, we've learned the Euler method for the first order equation. But we're going to extend it now to a system of first order equations, a coupled system. So we can reduce the second order ODE to two first order, uh, the second order ODE to two first order ODEs by means of a trick. Um, by the way, uh, sorry, we also need initial conditions to have a unique solution here. So we have x of t naught equals x naught and uh, x dot of t naught equals u naught. So those uh, are our initial conditions. So t naught, x naught, and u naught are supposed to be given. Okay, so uh, to write the second order equation as a system of first order equations, we use a trick. We write the first equation, x dot, as the definition of a new variable, which we call u. So in physics, typically, x is the position uh, vector or position uh, point in position space and u is the uh, velocity. Okay, then the x double dot we can write as x double dot is as a u dot so we can write the second equation as u dot and that's equal to x double dot so it's the right hand side is f of t and x function of t and x and now we replace x dot by the, the new variable u. Okay, so we end up with this system of uh, two first order equations, which are completely equivalent to the one second order equation. And we have the two uh, we have the two initial conditions, which are x of zero equals x naught. And the initial condition on x dot then becomes an initial condition on u. So sorry, I, we can choose t naught equal to zero, but uh, I kept a general x of t naught. So u of t naught is equal to u naught. Okay? And these are our initial conditions. So these are our ODEs. And uh, these are the initial conditions. Okay, so um, the Euler method then tries to solve uh, these two e ODEs simultaneously. Uh, we can show how that works by two graphs. So here's the first graph. Here's the uh, second graph. This is the time axis. The first graph will be solving for x. The second graph will be solving for uh, 
x dot, which is what we have called u. Okay. Um, so we start at the point t naught. We have a uh, we know the value of x of t naught that's equal to x naught could be positive or uh, negative. Uh, for argument, we'll take this to be positive. So this is x naught. We know the initial value of u, which is x dot. The initial value of u is u naught, which can also be positive or negative. And for sake of argument, we'll take it uh, somewhere here to be positive. Okay. Those are the initial conditions. And then the differential equation will give us the slope of the tangent line to the solution x of t and u of t at the point t naught, just like in the first order Euler equation. So the solution may go in some way here because I've defined uh, u naught to be positive then that means x dot is positive, so x is increasing, so the solution has to be increasing here because of the way I drew u naught. And then it can be increasing and turn over, and then u naught can be anything because we don't know what this f looks like at t equals t naught. So u naught could be increasing, could be decreasing. We don't know, okay? So we draw the uh, the tangent line. So here it's a uh, positive. So here that can be the tangent line, right? And the slope of this line is our u naught, right? And similarly here we can draw a tangent line. Uh, we don't know what f of t naught, x naught, u naught is. But for sake of argument, let's say it's negative. So here could be the tangent line. So the slope here of that line is equal to our right hand side at t naught, x naught, and u naught. Right? Okay. Uh, and then we march the solution along the tangent line. So this will be our t naught plus delta t. And the solution then comes to here. And this line segment here then becomes our approximation to the solution. We march forward u graph to t naught plus delta t. And then we get to here. And this line segment becomes the approximation to the solution between t naught and t naught plus delta t. And then we continue. So that becomes our new initial condition. Okay? So we get an iteration equation, um, which I can write down, at least to the first time step. So we have t1 is equal to t naught plus delta t, right? x1 is equal to x naught plus delta t times uh, delta x over delta t, so that's the slope, u naught, right? And then uh, u1 is equal to u naught plus delta t times the slope here, which is f of t naught, x naught, u naught, right? And that's the Euler method, because then we just iterate. So once we find t1, x1, and u1, then we use those on the right-hand side to find t2, x2, and u2.